Um, welcome everyone to the presentation. The topic that we have decided to speak on is keeping kids safe online. And the first thing I want to cover is why teach kids how to be safe online. It is well known that the weakest link in computer security is the user. This is especially true if the user has no idea of the risks. A significant amount of youth also do not know they have been had their security compromised until several years later, which is a big problem. The greatest dangers, ignorance and convenience, go hand in hand as a vul vulnerability in computer security. Kids are ignorant of the dangers on the internet and want things convenient enough that they don't have to take the time and effort to try to be safe. This is a flaw that I have seen exploited all the time. My younger brother, bless his little heart, has no idea how to be safe on the internet. He does, however, have an interest in modifications for a game called Minecraft and he is determined to get these modifications to work under any means necessary. I made the mistake a while ago to let him use my old computer. Without asking for help, he downloaded the internet, quite literally, search engines and every form of adware known to Google. The results were not pretty, and though I admire his tenacity and independence, it caused a lot of problems I had to fix. But what would have happened if he had gotten something worse when he stepped into the world of the internet? This clip is meant to demonstrate how you should teach browsing security to your children. Static. Yep. Oh, it's it's muted because it's um. I worked last night. <laughs> well, let's see if it'll do. Just I can hear the audio. That's for a different program. That's for wireless. No, fin no feedback. There you go. I'm not oh, hearing anything. It's hearing me press the button here. Yeah, we'll just yeah, set it on the internal speakers and we'll... There you go. Hopefully you don't go down. Okay. So go ahead and play your video. The thing with browsing security is that with the th amount of things done online, it would be wise to teach children good, good computer security habits so that they can learn to protect themselves. Children are a lot more likely to stay safe at home and abroad if it is by their own decision. In teaching the concepts, you need to inform them of the risk. Regardless of the audience, they will pay better attention if they understand the relevance it has in their life. In doing this, be sure to give them examples that can help them get a better idea of what could happen and the dangers they might face. Make it interesting. You don't want your ch the child checking their messages during your lesson. Not only does it render your message useless, but the child won't get anything from it either. Simple rules. 
Give them easy rules to follow and remember. And remember, there are a lot of dangers that can easily be evaded by simply choosing not to click on the wrong things. And explaining internet safety. Try to present the info as Google does. Examples, definitions, images, and sources. However, be extremely careful not to overwhelm them with info, which leads to the next point. In depth, your presentation is not a class, and you don't want, want it to be. Tell your child what is needed to un understand and apply your methods of safety and no more. Don't scare them to death either with paranoia and computer security. Too much at least. It isn't good for their health or likely help them learn. Don't depend on your child to ask questions about what you didn't cover. They have no idea what they're supposed to know. Here is a movie for a young audience to learn about cyberbullying. Check out Joe. He's pretty popular with a lot of the crowds at school because he doesn't try to be too cool and he's friendly to everyone. There's one dude though who doesn't like Joe. He's actually jealous of Joe and he'd like to scare that smile off Joe's face. His name is William, but everybody calls him Lamer Bill behind his back because he's always doing the lamest things to people. Lamer Bill's latest lame idea is to go after Joe. He starts off by sending Joe a nasty email in it, Lamerville calls Joe a total reject and says he's going to kick him in the teeth on the bus. Lamerville is a big, scary dude, and Joe's a little guy, so the email gets Joe pretty worked up. All day, he worries about the bus ride home. Lamerville is a bully, and because he threatens Joe over the internet, that makes him a cyber bully. Joe is so scared that he walks home from school that day. How do you think Joe should deal with Lamerville? Do you think Lamerville will stop? At home, Joe gets a whole bunch of texts from Lamer Bill. He threatens Joe again, saying he's going to follow Joe home from school tomorrow and issue a severe beatdown. Later, Joe sees Lamer Bill has posted an ugly rumor about Joe on a website a lot of people at school look at. All of this, the email, the text messages, and the website posting, is seriously scaring Joe. It's getting so serious that Joe is sick to his stomach. He's thinking of skipping school tomorrow. The worst part is that cyberbullying can happen anywhere, even when Joe thinks he's safe at home. Dealing with cyberbullies takes a big bag of courage. Joe reaches into his and does the right thing. He saves the nasty email, the website posting, and the text messages and shows them to his parents. His parents contact the school and give the principal all the evidence. Lamer Bill's parents, as well as the police, are notified. He's suspended from school for two weeks, and the next time it happens, Lamer Bill could end up in juvenile court for detention. That's how serious cyberbullying is. Cyberbullying is seriously bad news. If a cyberbully targets you, be courageous like Joe, and tell a parent or teacher about it. It's the best way to stay safe and keep the lamers from taking over. If there's anything that a young audience likes, it's a movie. However, please do keep in mind that NetSafe's videos, those suggested for 7th to 12th grade, are not quite appropriate for that age group. No offense to their ambition, but it bores the poor kids to death. This would be good for teaching the concepts to a child approximately the age of 12 or under. The site netsafeutah.org is an okay source that teaches the concepts in an understandable manner to a young audience. However, please, please, please do not try to show this to kids older than that. This week, along with every year, our school shows these videos along with another Weber School District video concerning cyberbullying. Never have I seen a student who wanted to do their homework instead of watching a movie. It was that bad. Trust me, I was there. Just give them something they can enjoy watching. This is an example of a source you should use to teach your older kids about computer safety.
vierde der zwijg. Meestal over, dus dat weten niet veel mensen. Dat is meest plus hoor. <laughs> Maison Rouge, Perco. Transacties, maar kent je rekeningnummer van buiten? Ik denk dat ik het wel weet. Het staat wel negatief op je bankrekening. Ja? 9, 7. Last month, you spent 200 euro's on alcohol. Vorige maand, 300 euro aan kleding gespendeerd. 8, 5. Voor een huis dat van eigenaar gaat veranderen. Zelfs 5000 euro. Ja, eigenlijk. 41. Ja. Ja, dat is Oh my god. Oh man. Ah, dat is vind je eng. This is an excellent movie. However, showing it to someone who does not know what a social media site is or the things that you do online, i.e. under the age of 12, it's hard to tell nowadays, it will make it hard to understand. For those that can understand the concepts though, this is a great movie. It is intriguing and has some great content that can make it personal to the audience. Keep it simple. Less is more here. The fewer rules you give and the easier they are to understand, the more likely they will be obeyed. Three is the magic number, and my personal favorite. In my AP classes, I am taught over and over again that people like to have about three main points to focus on. The more you have after that, the more difficult it will be to remember. The less you have, the less room you have to explain and declare your point, or message in this case. Remember, you know a lot, and they probably have never worried or cared about this in their entire life. Convenience is everything. You all know you said yes to those saved passwords. Don't count on them to ask questions when they don't know, because for them it would only lengthen the conversation and they probably want to be somewhere else. If there is anything you can learn about teaching your kids how to be safe online, it is these three main points. Make it applicable, make it interesting, and make it simple. Thank you. Oh, you can just leave that in there. Are these okay. slides can be available? They can be. We'll make them available. Because there's a lot of good information. Yeah. How about Taylor for putting this together all by himself? Do you guys believe that? That's awesome. That's incredible. Uh, Taylor is uh, my nephew, and he's super smart, in case you didn't already notice. Um, he's just very talented, interested in, in technology stuff, and has been involved in this kind of area for a while. You can go ahead and have a seat. Uh, I'm going to finish out talking a, about how to keep your children safe, and I would say that if you listen to only one of the two of us, his content's probably better. But I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how I feel about keeping children safe online. And uh, when uh, I was helping the committee for Open West prepare for this, they asked if anyone wanted to give this talk, and at first I said no, and then I said, okay, maybe. And so eventually I got talked into doing this, and I'm really excited about it. I just wasn't sure if I was going to be able to commit to it. Uh, and then they asked me if I wanted to present on something called Dan's Guardian. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but uh, it's an open source uh, firewall software for your children. And I am not going to present on that at all today. I told them, no, I won't do that. And the reason why I want to say that is because the thing that's going to protect your children online is you. You need to talk to your own children. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. Number one, it's really hard to set up a firewall and make it work very well. There are two different ways to set that up. You can have like a whitelist, which is only allow certain sites, which becomes problematic because then you have to add a lot of sites later on, or how do they do their homework, or things like that. You can do a blacklist where you try and prevent all the bad sites, and you can never come up with a list that's long enough to include all of the potential bad sites. Uh, you can do like content-specific filtering so that if you have uh, 
a website with certain words on it, then they can't visit it, and then you get into, well, what if they're researching stuff for a health class, and how does that work, or uh, I, a lot of times you have certain words that are embedded in other words. Um, certain company names have words that are deemed inappropriate as part of the company name, but it's not just that word, it's you know, two words combined or whatever that, that make up those kinds of things. So filtering is a really difficult issue. Uh, one other reason why filtering is a difficult issue is that uh, if you're like me, chances are your children will probably be smarter than you and they'll get around it. I know I was that kid. My parents put filters on their internet connection so that we couldn't get around things. And I wasn't interested in getting to those things. I was interested in, get, in getting around the filter because I'm a security enthusiast and I always have been. Uh, but you should be careful of that, right? If, if your children are into those kinds of things, you don't want to be seen as the bad guy. You want to be seen as someone who helps out. Uh, I don't want to discourage you from setting up those kinds of things. If that's what you really want to do, you should do so carefully and with a lot of uh, forethought. But what is going to be far more important is talking to your children. Uh, one more reason to do this is that your children don't just use the internet at your home. They'll use the internet at school, at a friend's house, uh, if they have a cell phone possibly on there. And it's really hard to put filters that are the same on all of those places. Uh, a lot of those things like schools, they will try and put filters on there, but then they have the same kind of issues and uh, they're really difficult to maintain. So number one, you need to talk to your children. Uh, number two, your input matters. I know that a lot of parents think, man, I, I just don't know if my kids want to listen to me. Or they'll probably just listen to their friends and do whatever their friends say. And that might be true, but that shouldn't make you shy away from actually trying to share your input because children often listen more than you think they do. Even if you know, they, they don't seem to be paying attention, they might catch at least part of the message and you can have uh, a positive effect on them. So it is important to make sure that you understand you do make a difference by having these kinds of discussions with your children. Uh, next, it's important to talk more than once. Having this discussion one time, let's sit down, let's talk about what the internet's about and how to be safe, is great. But if you do that once and then a year later you still haven't talked about it again, I think you're probably doing it wrong. And the reason why is because the way the internet works is, is volatile, it changes a lot. And the way that technology works changes a lot. You need to be up and current with all of those things and talk to your children on a regular basis about that. Did you have a question? No, I was just going to add to that is kids, kids, their understanding changes too. I have a six-year-old and what he understood at Christmas last year was very different than the Christmas before. So talking to him and adding to what he understands is important. Sure, and you know, Taylor mentioned his younger brother playing Minecraft. Uh, I know my son is really into Portal right now. And when he first sat down in front of that game, it seemed a little awkward to him, but now he can solve all of the levels all by himself just because he's been involved in that. As you use the internet more, you tend to notice certain things and your, your understanding will evolve. It's important to be engaged with your children on a regular basis and talk to them regularly about internet safety. Uh, it's also very important to set clear expectations and sometimes these expectations need to be uh, geared toward the age of the children. Uh, I know that uh, Troy, who just left, he, he has a rule that children under a certain age don't get to access YouTube all on their own. Uh, I happen to think that's a great rule for a certain age group because YouTube is a very dangerous site. It's got great content on it in a lot of places, but some of the, the suggested videos, I don't know what your experience has been like, but my personal experience, if I search for a video on hockey because I'm a really big hockey fan, they have videos with uh, not hockey content that are supposedly related that pop up all the time and it frustrates me because it's not very relevant content for me and some of those things are offensive to me or to my children and I don't want them to, to do that. So it, it is important to set clear expectations. Taylor talked a little bit about that, like have clear set rules. If you want your children to do a particular thing online or to follow some sort of pattern, make sure they understand it. It's really hard for all of us to hit a target that we don't see or that we don't understand. And if your children don't understand what you expect them to do, they're likely to not do it. So I, I think that you know, as clear as you can make that expectation, maybe uh, have a discussion about what it is you mean by the particular rules that you'd like to set up for your family or household.
Um, th there are a lot of things. Uh, Taylor mentioned the, the netsafe.org. There, there are a bunch of videos there, probably some information on that. Uh, maybe I can get back with you some, with some more information. Uh, most of the things that I would probably tell you at this stage are more privacy related that could apply to you as adults as well, because I gave a, another talk here at Open West about privacy. But uh, a lot of people are trying to track what you're doing online. And sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad, but you should probably make the choice yourself. Uh, what it really comes down to is uh, every family is different. Your, your values might be different. Your children might be different. Some children are really good at pressing the envelope. And some children are content with you know, just staying back from certain things. You, you should know what your children are like. You should be interested in the things that they're interested in and become involved, be a part of their lives in that way. Uh, the flip side of this, of course, is be reasonable. Uh, a lot of parents will have a tendency to perhaps overreact or set rules that aren't terribly reasonable. If you have a child that's over the age of 13 and you expect them to never log into Facebook, that might be an unreasonable expectation because Facebook allows children under the, uh, over the age of 13 to log in and create accounts. So maybe that's not a reasonable expectation, but uh, I can't tell you what's reasonable for your family specifically. You should probably have a discussion with your child about what they think is reasonable and then you know, evaluate that. It's OK for you to let them have input on what they should be doing online. I, I think that's totally fine. But in the end, you're the, you're the responsible party, and you should make sure that you have input in that as well and help them and guide them in, in setting up those kinds of rules. Next, uh, I want to talk a little bit about disclosure. One of the things that we do a lot, a lot online, is disclose information. And sometimes there's this gap between the way that disclosure works for people in real life talking to one another and what we would do as far as disclosure online. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but some people will post like, I made toast this morning for breakfast on Facebook or Twitter or whatever that you would never actually say to someone in, in person because no one cares. Or uh, some things that aren't terribly appropriate to put online, you will find online a lot. I don't know what your Facebook feed looks like, but I log in you know, two or three times a year, and I see all kinds of things that I'm thinking, I don't think that that's appropriate to put online. It is important for you to have a discussion with your children about what kinds of things they are disclosing online, what kinds of information they're giving out to people uh, for a lot of different reasons that I'd like to talk about. Uh, social networking sites, some of the things that we're willing to disclose on social networking sites are incredible. And they, some of them come with associated risks, some of them co come with benefit. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the TEDx talk by Cory Doctorow on Facebook. If you haven't, I would recommend it. Maybe not get as, as extreme as he is, but he, he gave a talk on on the, a little bit of like internet privacy. He's, he works with the Electronic Frontier Foundation. He's an advocate for privacy and things like that. And he talked about how social networking sites like Facebook are a little bit like a Skinner box. How many of you know what a Skinner box is or an operant conditioning chamber? So uh, a scientist, the last name of Skinner, came up with this thing that uh, allowed him to experiment with mice and engineer their behavior by changing their environment. And so he set up a, a situation where uh, a rat could press a button to release a pellet of food. And if the, the button released a pellet of food every single time it was pressed, the rat would go over and press the button whenever it was hungry and it would get food. And everything was great. If he made it so that the button did not always release a pellet, but sometimes did, kind of random, the rats would go over there and just pound that button as hard as it could, as fast as it could, hoping that they would get another pellet. Even when they weren't hungry, they would continue to do that. And sometimes when we interact on social networking sites, we work like that. Because it is definitely geared as an operant conditioning chamber on things like Facebook to have you disclose more and more information about yourself. And you're waiting for someone to be like, oh, great, that's such a wonderful post, or I'm so glad that you said that. So a lot of times you, you post something that you want people to react to or to comment on or whatever, and you get no response at all. And so you have to send another post and another post. And I think it's even more likely to, to subject children to this kind of behavior because they don't understand that this kind of thing is going on and maybe don't understand that they can control this 
by not disclosing that information and just saying, I want to be in control of what I'm disclosing. So it's important to understand that it's okay to limit the kinds of things that you're willing to share and that you don't always have to elicit some kind of response from someone else to validate you as a person, even on a social network. Uh, also, geotagging, taking pictures. How many of you saw this floating around on the internet over the last couple days, weeks? So uh, someone put up this, this sign because people were taking pictures of rhinos and the geotag data, the metadata stuck inside the picture, told poachers where the rhinos were to go kill them. Uh, rhinos are, are wonderful creatures and I appreciate everything that they do for like the diversity of life on Earth, but how many children are taking pictures with their cell phones with this same thing turned on? And there are way more predators online than there are poachers in the world, I guarantee you. Uh, there was recently a news article or something, like a, a TV news presentation about uh, people exploiting this and finding like down to the, like a meter or two from the bedroom where someone took their picture that's being posted online. You need to be aware of this kind of thing and talk to your children about it and have them turn geotagging off in situations where it's appropriate and possibly turning it back on when it is appropriate. But, you know, taking a picture inside of your house and leaving the geotagging on means that your address is available to everyone online who sees that picture. Uh, Facebook removes the geotag, but you need to understand it. Sure, and the, the question is, do, you know, what happens after you do that? If you post it on Facebook, does Facebook remove the geotag? Supposedly, yes. I can't guarantee that. And we don't know if they're going to continue to do that either. I know they ask where you're located. Uh, additionally, there's also the possibility of, you know, you don't really know what Facebook is doing with that data, if they're just stripping it out on purpose or if they're using that to try and market to you. It's hard to say. They're but if, certainly using it. If you take that information out before you post the picture up, then there is no information to do that with. Uh, and, you know, children probably share those kinds of things on Twitter and Facebook all the time. But what other sites are they sharing that on? And what risks are they associated with when they do that? That's something that you need to discuss with your child to be able to know what to do in that situation. Um, <clears throat> all right, I want to talk about cyberbullying for just a second. Cyberbullying is two-sided, and the video that Taylor showed actually had both sides, but it only focused on one, so it's really tricky. Um, cyberbullying happens to people when people are cyberbullied, but there are people who are the cyberbullies, and you as a parent could have a child that's either one of those things, right? If your child is being cyberbullied, what do you do? Save all the evidence, take it to the school or the police, preferably both, right? Uh, it's important to understand that that's not okay, and it is important to understand that you as a citizen of the United States of America have rights to prevent that kind of thing. Uh, my next slide here, this is the definition, the legal definition of a term called assault. And in the example that Taylor showed in his video, the child who was the cyber bully was guilty of a criminal offense called assault. Could potentially go to, you know, some sort of sentencing hearing for what he had done. Uh, if your child is likely to do these kinds of things, it would be nice to have a discussion with them in advance to say it's not okay to threaten someone, to threaten to harm someone online. If you do that, you're not being a responsible citizen and you as a parent can be called in to you know, testify in that kind of a case, and I think that we'd all probably rather avoid that. That's not very helpful to us as families, uh, but in, in any case, if your child notices that someone else is being bullied and they talk about that sort of thing with you, you can help out and uh, improve the, you know, the online quality of life for your child by saying, I'm willing to step up and help out someone else's child because you brought it up to me, I'm going to be a responsible adult and help out in this situation. Yes? There's also the civil implications of online speech, like if you say something that's a lie about someone, you can be responsible for a, a libel action. And some, your homeowner's insurance has, most of them will have a libel writer. You know, you may have a family and you can't you know, control everything they do, and it might be worthwhile to turn on the libel Sure, and I mean, those kinds of things can happen, but 
there, your, your child could be on either end of that, right? They could be the perpetrator or the, the victim, and you don't want either one of those things. So you should tell your children to not be the perpetrator and teach them you know, what kinds of things are appropriate to say online. You know, would you say this to someone to their face? Would you tell them you're going to issue a severe beat down to their face? If you do, that's also wrong. Let's talk about that too. But uh, you know, if they're not willing to say that to someone's face, they probably shouldn't say it to someone online. And uh, if they are the victim of that, by all means, save that information and keep that because it is important. You won't be able to necessarily you know, get the help that you need from the authorities at the school or the police department if you just come up with you know, random sort of things. Sometimes that's not enough. But if you have actual evidence, your, your case is much better to, to protect your child. Uh, also, <laughs> children are responsible online, whether they want to be or not. And if they're responsible, that means you as a parent are also responsible because you're probably the legal guardian of your children. So every time you go online, you're responsible for what you do and what you say. Uh, it's important to have a discussion with children about that responsibility in making them understand that with great power comes great responsibility. If you bring Spider-Man into the picture, so be it. Uh, if you don't, that's okay too. But you know, you need to make sure that your children understand that they can't just say anything that they want online and expect there to be no repercussions or consequences for what they say. Uh, teach them to be responsible internet citizens who say good things about people and positive things about people to be a positive influence on the internet. Uh, the internet comes with risks. You should teach your children about the risks that they are taking when they go online. What kinds of things happen as far as tracking, how they should protect their passwords, what's important about email. Uh, the kinds of risks that children face include you know, online predators trying to, to groom them or whatever. If that is the case, you know, your, your child is at risk by posting on certain sites, if they're involved in Snapchat or things like that, who knows. All of those kinds of things come with inherent risks, and if you talk about those risks, your children are more likely to avoid them or subvert them through whatever means because they know they exist. Uh, Taylor talked a lot about how you know, younger children, they don't understand these risks. They just think, well, I'm getting another add-on for my game, or you know, I'm just sharing pictures with friends. It, it's hard to say because on the internet, you don't really know who's on the other end. It's hard to, to determine that. And when you don't know that, there, there shouldn't be the element of trust that you would typically give to someone that, that you would trust in other situations. Uh, you should have courage when you talk to your children. Sometimes it takes courage to be able to have those kinds of discussions. If you're afraid to do it, do it anyway. Your children will benefit from that. Don't, don't be afraid to talk to your children just because you think their friends are the ones who are going to influence them or because you're not sure what to say, open a discussion with them and let them contribute as well. And then uh, lastly, investigate together. If your child asks a question that you don't know the answer to about helping them stay safe online or you know, someone said this, what does it mean? Investigate that together, find out together. It gives you the opportunity to, to build up trust between you and your child in helping to keep them safe. If you're willing to say, I don't know the answer to that, but let's find out together, then they're much more willing to listen to what you have to say. Uh, there are a lot of dangers online that you know, are incomprehensible, and there are a lot of dangers online that are a lot more close to home. The, the people who are more likely to exploit your children are probably closer to home than they are farther away. Uh, they can even be your children's friends. Uh, I read a, an article uh, on the BBC World News feed uh, over a year ago of uh, a trend happening in the, in the United Kingdom where uh, teens who were dating would ask their dating partner to write the partner's name on some part of their body and take a picture of it and post it online or send it to them. And that ends up being you know, a, a situation where you can have like revenge porn in, in a teenage situation. And how do you deal with that after the fact? It's a terrible thing to deal with after the fact. And the, the police generally have to get involved. But if you talk to your children in advance and say, it's not OK to take these kinds of pictures or to do these kinds of things, it's not OK to ask someone to take these kinds of pictures or do these kinds of things, then you're much more protected. And you're much more in control. 
And if you're willing to be reasonable and talk about these things with your children, then you'll have a, a greater experience, a better experience in keeping your children safe online. If you're not willing to do that, then you know you'll you'll end up doing something like just setting up a firewall and hoping that they don't find something that they're not supposed to find, or they never go to friends' houses, or or never use the internet at school. But uh, I I really honestly believe that the best way to keep your children safe is to just have open discussions about these kinds of things to possibly even you know, regularly review what are they posting on Facebook. Let's talk about what you just posted on Facebook. Is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? Should we delete this post? Maybe talk about the posts that you put on Facebook or on Twitter. Say, this is what I'm putting on Facebook or Twitter. Do you think this is okay? And have them participate in that kind of a discussion in evaluating your behavior so they can see a good example of that. Uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to open yourself up to scrutiny, but it's the right thing to do because then your children understand that we're not perfect, no one's perfect, and we have the ability to improve our behavior and the kinds of things that we're willing to post online by thinking about it critically. And that's really what you need to get inside of your children's minds is the ability to think about what they're doing online in a critical manner. Is this something that I should be doing online? Is it not? How does this evaluate as far as the values that my family has? Yes? I would say one criteria is you know, for older kids, uh, anything you say in a public forum, you should be happy to have that attached to your resume. Sure, and a lot of employers, maybe you know, having that discussion with your children, a lot of employers look up your Facebook account to try and see what you have posted online. Yeah, I see people post stuff about work sometimes and I think, oh. <laughs> yeah. Sure, and what happens if your boss is the person that you're complaining about and your boss is one of your friends on Facebook? Well, you could pot potentially get fired or you know, whatever. Uh, those kinds of things happen. And if you talk about that kind of thing with your children, then they'll be you know, smarter about it. If you don't talk about that kind of thing with your children, then maybe they don't know. I think a good way to look at it is if there's one person you don't want to ever learn this or see this, you should put it out there. Sure, or teach them how to you know, securely transmit information from one person to another if it's something that's intended to be private and isn't necessarily secret. There, there are ways to do that, but teaching them how to do that and why to do that is important. And having that discussion with them is terribly important because if they try and learn that from their friends, they might not get all the information. And I think that's all the, the content that I have for now. And I, I don't know, this time, I guess we have a couple more minutes. We have five more minutes. Do you guys have any questions? Okay, well, there, there are a couple issues that, that present here as far as this case study is concerned that I think are, are worth talking about, and I, that's a great example. Um, first of all, it's a shared computer, and you know, a lot of people can be affected by that. So talking with your children about, hey, we all use the same computer, so be careful with the things that you're you know, viewing on this computer because it affects everyone else. If you download a virus, if you are playing Minecraft and you download this add-on that actually is a virus, well, everyone else in the family is affected by that, and that's not cool. You know, you, children can understand that, and when you teach them that they're responsible for those kinds of things, then it's a bigger deal to them. Uh, as far as like uh, situations where unwanted pop-ups come up, uh, I would prefer to teach my children to say, close the window immediately and then come talk to a parent or you know, a responsible adult if you're at school or something like that. Uh, I don't know what your school's policies are, but my school has that policy. And I think it's a great idea because it means we can look into the history later when you know, we can be doing so safely, find out what went wrong, what popped up, what happened that, that caused this, and eliminate that as a threat for our children going forward. Um, if you are instituting things like firewalls, that's a great place to find a way to set a rule. Uh, if you're using some of the add-ons that I talked about in my privacy thing, like Adblock, you can definitely add in filters in Adblock to block that stuff all over the place. Um, if you're using uh, you know, Linux or BSD-based systems like Macs, 
You can you know, add things into Etsy hosts. I guess Windows kind of has that too, but it's a little trickier. But you can you know, block certain addresses from ever being accessed on your computer. And there's information online about that. You can you know, download uh, an Etsy hosts file to put on your computer that blocks all kinds of terrible things. Sure, and it sounds like malware, but you know, maybe. Yeah. And it, it could be. Like, so it might be worth investigating that too. Yeah, and the example I'm looking at, I couldn't find that anything downloaded. It was actually just opening another web page and starting a video. So, and you know, th there's another discussion that would be worth having with your children if they're old enough to understand it, which is, you know, there, there are things on internet websites called drive bys where you hit this site and they install some application on your computer to be able to access it later and, and things like that. Uh, not all online game sites have your best interest or even your fun in mind. They're probably trying to just take your information. In fact, if you sign up for Facebook games, that's exactly what they're trying to do. You know, uh, and they're also trying to steal all your friends' information for whatever like farm game or something that you sign up for. You sign up for that, and all your friends' email addresses and whatever is all like instantly transmitted to this third party where they can market all these other people. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great example. I can't give you like one you know, f fail safe sort of thing to, to solve that problem, but you know, involve your child in helping to solve that problem. Well, Google it. Adults, yeah, well, no, but like, but, but Google that and find out like, what's causing this? If you, um, a lot of browsers have the ability to turn off images. So maybe while you're investigating that, turn off the images so that you don't have to see all the terrible content. But then you know, figure out what the URL is that's serving this terrible site and figure out how to block it. Teach your children how to block those sites. If they learn how to block those sites, then when they become adults, they'll be able to block those sites too. If they don't learn how to block those sites, then well, what are they going to do? Maybe they'll figure it out on their own, but if you work with them together, then it's, a, I think, a better experience. And you, do a better job as a parent if you do that. Well, it also helps them when they're not with you. Sure, because they know what to do because they've done it before. Absolutely. Practice makes perfect. Any other questions? Comments? Heckling? No, I think, I Now's your chance. They, they do, and, and realistically, talking to children about privacy is a great idea too. I just, you know, we didn't have enough time to do all of that again. Uh, but yeah, if, if you didn't come to my privacy talk, you're welcome to check that out on the YouTube feed when they post it later on. It's probably worth doing that too. Um, not everyone has your best interests in mind, whether you're an adult or a child. Uh, being able to control what information you share is, is terribly important, and having that discussion with your children is also terribly important. So I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for coming. Uh, I hope that your kids are safe online and that you have a part in that. Thanks, Seth. You're welcome.